everyone. Thank you so much for joining me again today. Um, I've been having a lot of fun over the past few days. I have been playing with glitter paste, um, with that Nouveau paste again, um, and I was doing up some more of these kind of floral shapes with my stencil from Craft Stash, um, and just kind of having a play. And then I kind of thought, well, I've only got um, these three here. So I've got this glitter paste, um, eye zinc, the Nouveau glimmer paste, and then I got this really cool um, gold mousse. So you'll see me use these before. And this is kind of repeating myself because I've done a whole tutorial on creating your own glitter paste. But oh my word guys, I've made it so much simpler. <laughs> I've had so much fun. I didn't think it would work and it has worked a dream. So I'm gonna share with you what I did. Um, I apologize now, the fan is on, so it's a bit loud, background noise. It's 35 degrees here today. <laughs> it is hot, 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 hot. Um, and unfortunately, I just need to crack on and craft and film. <laughs> and so I've got a fan on just to kind of keep me a bit cooler in my office. Um, so what I wanted to share with you was how to make your own glimmer paste, but also your own kind of gold or um, metallic paste. So this is the Nouveau Mousse. And I'm gonna share with you how to just make your own and it's dead simple and dead cheap. Okay, so I've got this Tonic Craft um, Tacky Glue. I recommend using a Tacky Glue. I would not use um, something like the Tombow Glue. This is really tacky once it dries. It's like a sticky residue. Um, but any kind of cheap craft glue. These ones here, I know are on Every Craft's a Pound for a Pound. They're on the Tonic website for about a pound 20. I think they're the same on Craft Stash. They're quite a cheap glue. So I like this because it's nice and thick, really quite thick. Um, whereas if you use any other kind of glues, like a normal PVA glue, would probably be way too runny for this technique. You want something that's gonna be thick um, so that you can make it like a paste. And I swear to you, this is so <laughs> dead simple, it's not even funny. Okay, so all I did, I've got one of these jars. You can buy these from Alina's shop. Um, on her website. I think they're like a pack of six for about two quid. I like them because they're nice and lightweight. Um, I don't think they seal perfect, but that doesn't matter for this. What I would suggest is make enough for what you're working on for that day for the project. Don't make any more than that because this is using glue and the glue will dry quick. It'll harden, it'll be hard to open again. So just make what you're gonna need for your project. This is not a long-term solution. I'm not suggesting that you make something like this where you can keep opening and shutting the lids um, and it'll last forever. I'm saying just make enough for what you need for that day. That way you're not wasting product. That way you're not wasting storage space. You're just kind of creating it for that one um, project you're gonna work on and that is sort of my goal for today I wanted to make a whole bunch of backgrounds using my stencils and I wanted something quick and easy um, And I don't want to have to store it because of I'm running out of space. <laughs> You've seen my shopping lately um, uh, I've got this chopstick here. This is my universal chopstick. It's been lasting for a long time in my office It came with Chinese takeaway and it is such a good stir stick. So all I do is put in some glue first so I can get about two and a half good sized amounts of glitter paste or um, shimmer paste out of using one of these 60 ml bottles. So I'm just gonna squeeze in a decent amount um, so that I can do a few stencils. So I've squeezed in less than I would, I've done on my other ones, but I only wanna make like two or three backgrounds, maybe a few more than that. Um, and I've used probably a third of the bottle or less than a third of the bottle. Maybe a quarter would be a better analogy. Um, this is Alina's glitter from her shop online. I'll link everything I can down below. And I'm just gonna pour in a decent amount. And I kind of keep adding as I go. And then that way I don't end up with it too thick. And literally I'm just gonna stir it in. Now, it looks like it's not gonna work because it's so opaque. It's not all that clear. But I promise you, because it's glue, it dries clear and you get that amazing sparkle. So I kind of put enough in that it makes it a nice, decent kind of paste, but not so that it's like overly thick and chunky. If it does go a bit thick, you can add a bit more glue um, or you could add the tiniest bit of water and I mean tiny. So I'm gonna go with that amount for now 
because it looks decently shiny and it was starting to get a bit thick. Right, and I'm literally, this is so quick and so easy. It is so amazing. Now, I did have to work quite quickly with my glitter paste um, and my shimmer paste because it's so hot today that it is crazy drying quick. So I've got a whole bunch of stencils from Alina's shop. These are just a whole ton of, she's got eight by eight stencils and six by six stencils. Um, loads of really cool different kinds of patterns. Um, and all I've done is I bought some of this ages ago and I got it on um, Craft Stash and it's Stick and Spray by Crafters Companion. And I swear, I don't know what is wrong with me sometimes because this stuff's amazing. All you do is take it outside maybe put it over a bit of cardboard and just literally spray a light layer over the back of it and it takes 30 seconds to dry and it what it does is it makes it tacky so it makes it about the same amount of tack as my low tack post-it note tape it is really really light tack and it just means that if your stencils warped at all like for example this spotty one is slightly warped it's kind of sticking up here what it means is that it just holds it down beautifully and it kind of flattens it so if you can get a hold of this stuff and you want to do stencil stuff I would highly recommend it it is much easier than using um, low tack tape and taping it down on all sides and I've used a lot of it and I can feel it it's still got at least half in there and I've used a ton um, so I've sprayed it on this one side now I've got this craft mat here this is from all to new and I bought this from craft stuff craft stash ages ago I also have the low um, no stick baking sheet type thing um, and I love using that but this one is really good for this kind of technique because it doesn't move it's really stuck to my surface so when I'm done like when I'm spreading my paste I can be quite firm and quite aggressive and then when I wipe my mat I can really wipe it and everything I've ever stuck on here has come off. Like, I mean, I do have a bit of staining, but it comes off really easy. But I do prefer this mat for something like this. Um, it also kind of makes my card stick to it quite well. So here's my card base. And it's, you know, like I can't, I'm not wiggling it around. Whereas if I had it on my surface, it would just wiggle all over the place. And if you have those non-stick um, sort of baking sheets, it would just slip and slide. Whereas this is... It's not tacky, but it's rubber, so it just doesn't move. So all I'm gonna do is stick my stencil down. Now this is smaller than my card, so I'm not gonna worry too much. Oops. I'm not gonna worry too much um, about getting it central because I will probably just use a die cut and cut it out. Literally that's all I've done. I've just stuck it down and you'll see what I mean. I can keep sticking this down and keep sticking it down, keep sticking it down, and I don't get glitter going underneath you don't end up with smudging because that tack just sticks down. So all I'm going to do is take my glitter paste um, and literally just start slap dashing it all over. <laughs> I'm telling you, this is just, I don't know why I've never done this before. It has revolutionized things for me. Now it's looking a little bit thin on the glitter, so I'm kind of thinking maybe I should put more glitter in there, but never mind. If you go outside of your square, don't be too concerned because you can always trim it down. This is a nice six by six. So I'm just spreading it on and if you are in a warm climate, make sure you're working quick because the glue dries fast. It's a fast drying tacky glue. Um, so it's not really meant to be used like a paste like this. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wipe this off quite firmly and make sure I get as much as I can off the back and I'll show you why in a second. So I'm gonna lift that up. And you can see we've got this beautiful crystal clear pattern. And it is gorgeous. And when it dries, that white opaque will go really clear. So that's the first one. Now I'm gonna share with you how you can keep going. I can usually get about four or five out of one go. So here's my next bit of cardstock. If I got any on the sides, then I can just take my wet, damp um, microfiber cloth, wipe it all down, use my rag and dry it and keep going. So I'm gonna take my stencil, I'm gonna stick it back down again. Now when you stick it back down, sometimes it can kind of pop up a bit and that's why I've got my nice clean palette knife and I'm just going to rub it down. And when I stick it down, it then sticks that stencil down and I'm not getting any glitter underneath again. Now you, by all means you can use low tack tape, um, masking tape and you can tape it down. I'm just showing you, <laughs> you this revolution of, of life of using this sticky spray oh my goodness it is I have pounded out 
tons of these. You will see what I mean. Oh my goodness, I have done probably 30 to 50 backgrounds already. I've just gone a bit mad. Um, kids are away. My husband's taking them on holiday with his parents. This is the most time I've ever had alone and I am making the most of it. I am having a fantastic time alone. <laughs> so normally I absolutely love spending time with them, but after being in lockdown for so long, oh, this is fantastic. Okay, so we lift it up and again, it's utterly perfect. There's no smudges, there's no glitter that's got behind. It's awesome. So you can use tape, but I tell you this stuff, oh man, I think it was like five or six quid worth every penny. So there we go. There's another one. Then I thought we could move on and I'm going to share with you how to make very similar to the Nouveau paste. Um, also what I've done when I've had a bit left over is I've just rubbed it all over a piece of paper and just kind of made a textured background out of it. So I'm going to clean up all my stuff now. Because this is glue, you need to wash it off instantly because it will start to dry. Um, and I don't know how well you're going to do with getting it off if it's completely dry. So I did all this in my kitchen earlier so I could just crack on and clean as I go. So I'm going to go and clean all this up and then we will do our next one. Okay, so I've given my knife a little wash. I'm just going to give my workspace a little quick wipe, get all that glitter and extra stuff off. Um, and I love using reusable cloths. I feel like we can go through baby wipes so quick and easy and it's such an easy thing to do is just grab a baby wipe and use it but actually we need to just really put in that extra effort and use a reusable one don't we okay so I've got another container here purely because I've run out of the Alina ones um, I prefer these over sort of these cheaper ones these ones I think I got from like the pound shop again I'm just gonna take my glue and I should have stuck this upside down because now it's all in the middle. I'm going to blob in a decent chunk. Chunk? Decent amount. So again, I've still got just about half left in this bottle and I've done two. I've got my Arteza mica powders. Let me share with you. So these are my Arteza mica powders. I got them from Arteza a while ago and I kind of bring them out every so often and have a go. Now the fun thing about this is you get 60 different colors. So you get a massive amount um, and they come in the little jars so they're really good. Um, and they're pretty much all sort of metallic or shiny. They've all got some kind of sheen to them. Um, you've just got some of everything in here so it's quite nice if you've got a project where you're using a lot of purples then you'll find a purple in here and you should be able to find like a color that's a near match for almost anything with 60 color options. So I have used a couple metallic ones already and I'll share with you how they look in a minute. Um, ooh, I changed my plan. So I was going to use this sort of charcoal gray um, just to kind of do like a nice dark one because the pigment in them is so good. Maybe I'll do that in a minute and share with you. But I really wanted to do this peacock kind of feathered um, stencil. So let's find like a kind of teal or turquoisey color to kind of go with that. So I know this one. We're going to go with emerald green because it looks very cool and tealy colored. So all I'm going to do is dump in between a quarter to half of this bottle probably because I put in quite a lot of glue so you can obviously use a lot less to do that so that's maybe a quarter of the bottle and again I'm going to stir it but you got to stir a bit gently this time because this is really fine fine powder you can get mica powder from a lot of different places you could even try using your makeup your old makeup crush it up really really fine and chuck it in some glue and just see if that works if you've got some metallic makeup I bet you it would work really nice. Um, I'm using this. You can use um, the Arteza mica powder to make makeup. You can use it to make bath bombs. It's very safe. Um, they've done a lot of product testing on it, I believe. So that will probably do, but I like to be sure, so I'm going to tip in a bit more. <laughs> um, but yeah, anything that's mica powder, and makeup is a lot of mica powder, so you could try that and have a go and just see if it works. All you're doing is using tacky glue and if you buy some cheap tacky glue then you know go for it <laughs> and see how it turns out so again it's looking very opaque so 
So it looks very opaque, but it dries clear because it's glue. So don't be put off by the fact that it doesn't look shiny um, and doesn't look quite right. I'm going to add the tiniest bit of water in here because it is quite thick because it's so hot today. I think it's drying quite quickly. So I've just got a little eyedropper thing here and I'm just going to put in a few drops of water. I don't want too much. Um, I keep a two liter bottle of water <laughs> under my desk. Um, it's just tap water and I just keep it under my desk for whenever I need to do something like this. <laughs> Um, I'm a bit lazy. I don't like having to go back into the house again and again and again. So the nice thing with tacky glue is you can add water and it kind of softens it up a bit. Sometimes the mica powder, because it's so fine, I feel like it kind of acts a bit like flour does when you add flour to something. It kind of thickens it. So with the mica powder, you might actually need to add a bit of water. You want like a nice smooth paste, but you don't want it to be runny because you don't want it going under your stencil too easily. And make sure you're cleaning as you go because it is glue um, and the glue will dry quickly and permanently. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna do another bit of card and I'm gonna get some black card in a second as well. So you can see through the stencil, which is quite nice, but again, I'm gonna probably trim it down. This one again has got the sticky spray, which is really nice because it's a very de detailed, intricate dye, um, not dye, um, stencil. So it's going to be quite easy to get stuck underneath. So I'm going to blob that on there. Um, and again, I'm working with it a bit faster than I probably would normally work with it because it is so hot here. Everything is drying out. I put ice in my water and within a few minutes it was all gone. <laughs> I was like, oh my goodness. Um, the UK just does not get this hot very often. Um, And again, I'm just going to kind of scrape it. If you wanted to add more texture, then you could um, scrape less off the top and you could leave it a bit blobby in places and then you could get like kind of a bit of a textured look going on. And you do have to work with it quickly when it gets thin because that glue starts to dry and then you start to get sort of natural texture because the glue is drying and getting a bit sticky. So I'm pull that off. And how gorgeous is that? That is beautiful so pretty and I can't wait to see what it looks like when it dries okay so again I'm gonna really quickly wipe this down so I can put my next bit down um, and you want to work quick because you don't want your glue drying out because it's a paste but it's made with glue <laughs> again I wouldn't save this long term I don't think it's gonna last because it will dry and I don't know how it will react with um, with the products you use also I found some glitters the um, color in the glitter ran. So I ended up with um, a very pink kind of paste rather than the paste with the glit pink glitter in it. Okay, for fun, I always like to use a bit of black. And again, I'm gonna pop this back down. It's still got the sticky on the back of it. Um, I'm gonna make sure this is nice and clean. And then I can just push that down with my palette knife. And then that way, all those bits are put like adhered to the paper and I'm not gonna get paste. I could do it with the paste on my palette knife, but then I found that it just kind of went under the stencil as I was pushing the stencil down to adhere to my card. So all my cardstock today that I'm sharing with you is from Lime Tree Craft here in the UK. It's my favorite cardstock um, shop that I buy from all the time. I'll link them down below as well if you wanna go and check them out. Okay, so we're gonna just scrape off that top layer again. And again, you can see I've made way too much. I've done two stencils and I've probably got another three or four left in there. Well, another two or three left in there, sorry. I could probably have between four to five in total. Right, and that's drying out quick because it's hot, so I'm just gonna put the lid on that for now. Maybe I'll see if I can do something tonight. I'm just gonna lift that up. And it is absolutely stunning, I love it. I love this look and I can't wait to see it when it's dried. So I just wanted to share with you how great this mat is. Um, I'm not trying to sell it to you, I just am so happy with it. I don't know why I haven't used it more. But this is really damp, um, obviously because I've just cleaned my surface, but I can push so hard and it doesn't slip and slide anywhere at all. Like I'm pushing full force, so I'm wiping everything off and it's just staying perfectly in that one space. It's not stretching, it's not moving, and it is getting squeaky clean. So 
it's brilliant. Okay, so I went and rinsed everything off um, and I remembered that I was watching this one lady on YouTube once and um, I can't remember who it was, it was a couple years ago and she had like a little kind of um, almost like a baking pan that she kind of kept next to her desk filled with water and so when she was finished with one stencil she'd just chuck it in there and then she could go in and wash all her stencils in one go which is a great idea, especially when you're working with glue as your um, base. <laughs> so that could be another option. It would save you getting up and down, up and down, and washing everything. Um, so I wanted to share with you the ones that I made today and yesterday and how they've kind of dried. Um, so I did a gold because I wanted to compare the gold with my Nouveau gold and just kind of share with you how that looked. I did a copper and then a shiny brown. And I did a white, which I've just now realized I don't think I even used this one yet so I will be using this one and hopefully you'll see pictures of it at the end of this video. I will share with you all the projects I've made at the end of the video and you can have a look at all the things I've done. So I did some glitter as well, the bottles for that are in my kitchen, but I used Alina's glitter. I'll start with those first. So this is Alina's glitter here, it's the light purple um, and this is the Nouveau glitter. So. It's worked out beautifully. She's got this one stencil that's got the balloons on the top and a unicorn on the bottom. So I was thinking I could do a card like that with the unicorn at the bottom or I could cut this and kind of have it as like a topper on my card. But the glitter is stunning and the glue dries completely clear. So you get this beautiful glitter. Um, and I did, of course I did it on black as well. So this is the Nouveau glitter, which is this one here. Um, and it just looks like that and that bottle cost me about three or four pounds on sale This is using normal tacky glue and Alina's glitter from her shop online and honestly, I can't tell a the difference They're both stunning and very glittery um, And this one probably cost me Maybe 50p or less to make probably less than that um Whereas this one is probably about, I think, five or six pounds full price. Um, and this was like 50 pence, um, maybe, <laughs> to make this one. So there's my unicorn. How cute is that? Right, then I also used Alina's blue. And I did some blue stenciling. So you can see it's absolutely gorgeous. I love it. Um, it dries so clear. You really cannot tell that you've used glue. It looks like a glitter paste. It's really cool. So I did a few black. Oh, there's another purple one. Another purple one. A big plans. And here it is on white. Very pretty. There's the balloons again on black. I've used black pearlescent card from Lime Tree Craft. So you can see I just went to town and this was, this blue one, I've still probably got half left, well just under half, and I filled it full. I did a full one of these containers and I probably have about that much left in my blue container and I've done all these backgrounds with that blue. Now I'm going to move on to my paste. Now these are still a bit tacky because they haven't fully dried, but this is my glue. It does feel a little bit tacky. But when it's on a card, no one's gonna be filling your card to see what it feels like. So this is the gold um, from my mica powder. This is the Nouveau. So the Nouveau is a slightly brighter yellow. It's just probably not the same kind of yellow, but honestly, they have basically the same amount of sheen to them. So this is Nouveau, and this is just using mica powder. Mica powder and glue. Um, this was my scrap leftover kind of copper color and look at the texture on here. I don't know if it's catching the texture very well. Um, but I just took my palette light knife and because it was glue and was starting to dry, I just kind of ran it over. It does feel a bit tacky, whereas this dries quite smooth. But I'm not bothered, it's just going on a card. <laughs> so it cost me almost like nothing to make. So that's my kind of copper, which kind of came out a bit red. Um, then I did some balloons. Now this did warp the paper, but that could be because it's thin paper. This is paper from Alina's shop. This is decorative paper. So it could be because of that. It could be because of using the glue, but once I stick it down on my paper with some adhesive behind it, it will, it'll be fine. Again, it's still 
feels a bit tacky but that doesn't bother me because it's not shifting it's not moving it's not rubbing off my hands it just feels a bit funny but look at the shine and here's that kind of copper again on black it almost looks like a fuchsia pink it looks really cool um, these are all stencils from Alina's shop by the way and then I did it on some of her decorative paper as kind of like a cool background and I will trim all these down to fit card fronts then here's the brown and again it looks so opaque in the cat um, in the container like it looks really opaque but when it dries it's clear and shiny I think I'm gonna have to go and find some makeup in my room and have a go with some makeup as well there's um this one I ended up getting a bit behind the stencil so it kind of made a bit of a mess that was when I pushed it a little bit too far here's a green that I did and this mica powder almost makes it look to know not really necessarily rainbow but it kind of like changes color in the light it's really cool and I use the same stencil again on this brown and that one there so I am going to share with you all my makes and my creations with these um, including some of our new ones that we just did together okay let's do this <laughs> I found this makeup which you know look a bunch of dust is on it I found this upstairs in my room I am never in my life going to wear this blue <laughs> don't think I'd wear probably most of those but right let's see if we can do this let's get this out I'm just gonna scrape it out with a spoon I'm obviously gonna use less glue because there isn't very much of this Okay. so I've just got this small amount here just give it a nice squish <laughs> this could maybe not work out so well because I'm using such a big container okay we're gonna have to make do with this container because I haven't got anything else at the moment other than like teeny tiny okay so this is just makeup get that off of there okay I've added some glue in there this would be ideal with my palette knife but then I just I just sat down and I've left the palette knife in the house after cleaning it <laughs> stupidly so we're gonna try and mix it with just the glue okay I don't know if I could have chosen a harder container to work with oh my goodness this was almost impossible to mix in there okay All right, I've got a card front here and we're just gonna go with some dots and I have no idea if I've got enough paste to cover this whole thing um, but we will give it a go and this is just using makeup instead of oops I've not got very good sticky on the back of this I haven't re um, sprayed it since I washed it so it might leak underneath my stencil a little bit look at that plenty to do this perfect And this was just using makeup that I would never wear and I think it was just cheap boots makeup I think I bought it possibly ages ago for when I was looking after kids where they could use it as like play makeup Woo <laughs> right we'll let that dry and then we'll see how it looks so here's the big reveal they've all dried I left them for about an hour it's so hot here check out how stunning this orange glitter is oh my word it is so sparkly seriously guys bottle of glue and glitter <laughs> this is the Arteza mica powder again it's got that really cool kind of um, iridescent kind of shine to it it's really stunning and it's a bit um, like it is proper shiny whereas this is the eye makeup it's a bit more matted but it did work so I did have a firm rub of it because I thought because it's eye makeup it might sort of shift a bit but it doesn't so the eye makeup worked as well you don't get quite the same sheen you do as with the mica powder but still good and still dimensional like it's very you can feel that texture in it and this is the last one on the black with the Arteza mica powder absolutely stunning 
So now I am going to make some cards out of these and then I will be back to share with you. Okay, so it has been a week since I last did a video, hence why my nails have changed. <laughs> Again, I don't know what is going on with the UK, but oh my word, we are on day three of over 30 degree weather. It was 35 again the other day. It was 33 today. I'm filming this evening. <laughs> it's been so hot. Um, so I haven't even finished my cards. I went bonkers with this technique. I have still got about six that I haven't yet cut up. This is my pile of ones that I have cut up but not yet put sentiments on. Um, and I'll explain why in a second. And then this is my pile of basically finished. So I will finish all of these. I will share photos. I might share them on the YouTube sort of instant message, th message thing. Or I might do another quick little video. Basically, I'm waiting for these dyes from Alina's shop. She released a whole huge set of word dyes with shadows. Now, I think it cost me about 13 or 14 pounds plus around... I don't know, three or four pounds shipping tops. So for around 20 pounds, I've got all these dyes coming. And that's what I'm gonna wait for. I really love shadow dyes. I feel like it pops off a background really nicely. And I've got, I wanna do happy birthday on most of them. And she's got a really, really nice font. It's the same as the thank you, which you'll see in a minute. Um, but I'm really, really excited about it and can't wait. So I have prepped all my cards. This is what I like to do. I like to get them all ready to go and prep them all. So all my cards have got um, layers on them. So I've got sort of my base, my sort of background layer, and then my top one. Often I do a layer on the inside of the card as well to kind of make it as stable as the front because it's quite thick and big. But I've kind of kept all my colors together. So I've got my sort of copper ones all together ready to go so that when I go to cut my top sentiment, I can cut it the same way for each of them. And then that way I'm not wasting time doing each individual card. I'm doing them by color. So they are slightly different sizes um, according to how I've kind of done my paste, but I've backed them with the same kind of colored card. This one I didn't bother backing, I just put it straight onto a black card. I will put a white backing in here to write on. Um, this is the makeup one. I did trim it down on the edges because it was overhanging. Um, that's the one we did with makeup. And so I've got that as just a card base on its own. Then I've also cut some of mine out of tags. I used um, a metallic rub for this one. So I took the stencil and I have this metallic kind of paste and I just kind of rubbed it over. Now I'm not as much of a fan of this as you can see it's slightly on my finger. It does seem to rub off. I think you need to seal it. So I kind of turned these ones into tags, the ones I did with a metallic rub rather than a card. Here's my green one with my balloons. I've backed it with gold and then backed it with green. And then on the inside I did the back as well. I'll go into more detail when I finish these off but I'll just share with you. I've made them into cards. I've done a few different shaped ones. This is from, um, this is from Surprise Creation. Um, these tags are from Alina's shop. So I've done my little tags um, to go with the cards as well. Um, again, this is the glue and this is the tonic Nouveau paste or Nouveau mousse, I should say. And these are using Surprise Creation square dies um, with the pattern in them. And this, oh my word, I'm not an orange fan, but this is so gorgeous. I am definitely going to be making a lot more of these orange glitters, and I think I'm going to probably buy a few more glitters from Alina's shop as well. They are stunning. I am so happy with how these turned out. I'm really excited to make these into some birthday cards. Um, then I've got a little tag with a bit of scrap. So this was a bit of scrap left over from one of my cards and I turned it into a tag. I've got my unicorn ones ready to go. I've got them all matted and backed and ready so I can just put on happy birthday under them. Really, really loving Alina's glitter. Oh my goodness, it's so gorgeous and sparkly. Again, these are the same. I've backed them all the same um, and put them onto some white cards. Um, pearlescent cardstock from uh, Lime Tree Craft. And these are my finished ones. Now, just quickly to say as well, um, Arteza does have glitter as well, and their glitters are quite fun. Because like the mica powder, you get a huge range. I think it's probably um, probably around 60 glitters as well, but they all have the same sort of numbers across their range, so they'll probably all coordinate. So if you wanted to mix and match your glitter with some of your um, 
mica powder, you could probably get the same numbers and they would match really nicely together. So you could have glitter and um, the mica powder together, just as a side note. Right, so I did this Celebrate one. This is an Alina's die. Um, and I just cut out Celebrate, which is, I think, a Stampin' Up! die. Um, and these dies here are from Alina's shop. I'll try and link all these down below, by the way. These are all from my stash from ages ago. I got a bow from AliExpress. This was my leftover um, eye zinc paste. I couldn't get it, obviously, back into the container because it's a squeezy tube, so I just smeared it across some black um, pearlescent cardstock and it gave a really funny, cool effect. So that's how I've done that little card there. Then I've done this one as well. Now, <laughs> this was that ba background I did with texture, and I'm thinking of maybe putting something like maybe my little sentiment strips along the bottom, so celebrate, um, enjoy your birthday, or something like that along the bottom. It's probably what I'll do. However, I got a little fed up because I did all this hard work and I stacked this die. I've got four layers of stacked die on there. And then I didn't pay attention to which way I put the card. So it is upside down. So I'm going to have to take that off, um, basically cut it off and then re-glue it onto a new card base. But it involved die cutting three times. So I wasn't so keen on doing that after I'd spent an afternoon in the heat working in my office. Um, here's my next one. This is a flower die which has little stars along the edge and I've cut it twice, once from purple and once from the um, purple glitter. This is the Nouveau glitter. And then I've got this Let's Celebrate die here which is from Desire, Desire I think is what it's called, I always say it wrong. Um, and it's, um, yeah, so I'll try and link it down below if I can. I think I got it on Craft Stash, so I'll link that for you. Um, and then I backed it with some vellum, which I put double-sided adhesive on so that I could stick the vellum down without seeing the adhesive. Um, and then I've got this circle die here, which is from um, Surprise Creation. And I die cut it first with it hanging off the edge so that I could make a little card out of it, like so. And then I die cut it again out of a solid one to cover up that edge there. So I love how this one turned out. This is another die from Alina's shop. I just glued down the center of it. I left this to be a bit more dimensional on the outside. Um, the Happy Birthday is a die from Stampin' Up. And I again cut a circle using Surprise Creation dies out of vellum which had sticky back on the back of it so that I could still see the dots um, but that this happy birthday kind of stood out a bit more. So I did that one there. This is probably one of my favorite ones. I didn't like it when I was getting started, but I came to really love it. I used my homemade wink of Stella and covered the die cut before I stuck it down on the vellum. And I used again, the vellum has got sticky back on it. Uh, this is another flower die from Alina's shop and a little pretty flower from AliExpress that I glued on the top. And I love how it turned out. Then on the inside to give it some stability, I put a piece of card in and I inked the edges in a purple, a dark purple, so that it would kind of coordinate and match. So I love how that turned out. Then I've got some blue tags ready to go to match my blue cards. And I've got this Hello Belated Birthday Greetings and the Hello is from Alina's shop as well. I've backed the pearlescent card onto some blue card, put it onto the pearl card, and then did the reverse again, where I've got the blue and then a white so I can write my message inside. These make such great boy cards. I've got Wishing You, this is just a die in my stash, um, birthday, belated birthday greetings, and I've done the inside again. And this is the font that I was telling you about. She's done a whole bunch more words in this same kind of font and I've stacked this three times and stuck it down on top of the outline and the outline matches the backing here and the black matches the pearlescent cardstock that I've got. This is probably one of my favorite ones. Um, so I love them and I planned to do all of them today. However, I just didn't have enough word dyes, so I have ordered that massive set from Alina. I can't wait for it to come. I will then finish off all these cards and share them with you. Again, this is one that I've die cut ready to go, um, so I can stick this on the front of a card. Um, I just love it. I had so much fun. And I'm sorry this was such a long video, but it was just such a fun experience to do. And I took like just one afternoon to make all these glitter backgrounds and I've taken another afternoon to just assemble them into cards and it's well worth it. It's a really fun 
um, enjoyable activity. So I do hope you enjoyed yourself. Please let me know in the comments if you gave this a go as well. I'd love to know about it. I've got a Facebook group if you'd like to share it over there. And I do hope you subscribe and like my video. I would love it if you were a subscriber to my channel. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for joining me. Bye.